Hello and welcome to the Earth SciShow podcast, where we explore the fascinating geology behind the world's natural wonders. I'm your host, Mr. Earth Guy, and today we're going to talk about the Mediterranean Sea, that beautiful blue body of water that borders Europe, Africa and Asia, the one that's famous for its sunny beaches, delicious cuisine and ancient civilizations. But did you know that the Mediterranean Sea was once a dry and barren desert? Yes, you heard me right. About 6 million years ago, something happened that turned this paradise into hell on earth. It's called the Mycenaean Salinity Crisis, and it's one of the most dramatic events in geological history of the planet. And just as a reminder, if you enjoy this podcast, please consider following and subscribing and hitting that notification icon for the next time I release an episode. Let's get to it. So what exactly happened? Well, it all started with plate tectonics. The continents that we live on aren't fixed in place. They're constantly moving around on giant slabs of rock called tectonic plates. And sometimes these plates collide with each other, creating mountains, volcanoes and earthquakes. That's what happened between Africa and Eurasia. They were slowly drifting towards each other, squeezing out the sea that was between them. This sea was called the Tethys Sea, and it was the ancestor of the Mediterranean. As Africa and Eurasia got closer and closer, the Tethys Sea got smaller and smaller. It lost its connection to the Indian Ocean first, then to the Atlantic Ocean, and by 5.97 million years ago, it was completely isolated from the rest of the world's oceans. It became a giant lake with no outlet. Now imagine what happens when you have a lake in a hot and dry climate with no fresh water coming in. It evaporates, right? And as it evaporates, it leaves behind salt. Lots and lots of salt. That's what happened to the Tethys Sea. It dried up so much that it became a series of hypersaline lagoons surrounded by salt flats. The water level dropped by thousands of metres, exposing vast areas of land that used to be underwater. The seafloor became a desert. And due to the dynamic nature of the world, it wasn't always like that. The climate changed over time, sometimes becoming wetter and cooler, sometimes drier and hotter. The salinity of the water also varied depending on how much water flowed in from rivers or rain or temporary openings to the ocean. So how do we know that this event occurred? Well, evidence is found in the geological record. In the 1970s, geologists actually drilled into the Mycenaean salt layers within the deeper parts of the Mediterranean Sea. Here they found evidence of red and green floodplain silts, gypsum, anhydride and rock salts, which are created from brine deposits. These indicate a period of very high evaporation with very saline water. Some of these salt deposits were tens of kilometers thick, indicating lots and lots of evaporation with isolated water areas. But massive presence of salt doesn't always require desiccation of the sea. The main evidence for the evaporative drawdown was from viewing the remains of submerged canyons that cut into the size of the dry Mediterranean basin by rivers flowing down the abyssal plain. And for those wondering, the abyssal plain is essentially the sea floor. For example, the Nile cut into its bed down to 200 metres below sea level at Aswan, highlighting just how shallow the Mediterranean Sea had become in its life cycle. There is some evidence that plants and animals did survive in this area, but they are far and few between. Most of the time, life was hard in the Mediterranean basin. Many plants and animals died out because they couldn't adapt to the extreme conditions. But some land animals saw this as an opportunity to explore new territories. They crossed the dry seabeds and migrated between Africa and Eurasia. Hippos, antelopes, camels and rodents were among them. Some of them even colonised islands like Crete and Malta, which were then like mountains in a plain. But this situation didn't last forever either. Eventually something happened that changed everything again. Something big. Something epic. It was a flood. A flood like no other. A flood that filled up the Mediterranean basin in a matter of years. A flood that marked the end of the Mycenaean salinity crisis and the beginning of a new era. We call it the Zanclean Flood. This flood brought back life in a spectacular way. And the key to this story is the Strait of Gibraltar. The narrow passage that connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. The one that's guarded by the mythical pillars of Hercules. Well, technically, back then there was no strait. There was only a mountain range that separated the two seas a mountain range that was slowly eroding away. As the Mediterranean basin dried up, it created a huge difference in elevation between the basin floor and the surrounding lands. This difference was as much as four kilometers in some places. That's like having Mount Everest next to a deep hole. And this difference created a lot of pressure on the rocks that held back the Atlantic waters. At some point, the pressure became too much. 
The rocks gave way and the waters started to spill over the edge. At first it was a trickle, then it became a stream, then it became a river, and then it became a gigantic waterfall that carved out a deep channel in the rock. And then before you knew it, it became a flood. A flood that poured millions of cubic meters of water per second into the Mediterranean basin. A flood that created rapids and whirlpools and waves that were hundreds of meters high. A flood that raised the sea level by 10 meters per day. It was like opening a giant tap and filling up a bathtub. But this was no ordinary bathtub. This bathtub was 3,000 kilometers long and 1,500 kilometers wide. The Zanklian flood was one of the most powerful natural events ever recorded on Earth. It lasted for several years and filled up most of the Mediterranean basin. It ended the 600,000 year long salinity crisis and restored the sea to its former glory. But it also had some consequences. For one thing, it changed the climate and the ocean circulations of the planet. By adding so much salt and water to the world ocean, it affected how water masses move around and distribute heat and nutrients. Some scientists think that this may have triggered or accelerated the ice ages that followed. For another thing, it changed the geography and ecology of the region. By flooding the land bridges and canyons that connected Africa and Eurasia, it isolated many populations of animals and plants that had migrated across them during the drying phase. Some became extinct, whilst others evolved into new species. And for yet another thing, it changed the history and the culture of humanity. By creating a sea that was rich in resources and diversity, it attracted many civilizations that settled along its shores and islands. The Phoenicians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Arabs, the Turks, and many others left their mark on this sea and its people. The Mediterranean Sea is a unique place in the world. It's a place where nature and culture have interacted for millions of years. It's a place where beauty and drama have coexisted for ages. And it's a place where salt has played a crucial role. Salt is not just a seasoning for food. It's also a preserver of life. It's also a witness of history. Thank you so much for listening, and I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm your host, Mr. Earth Guy, and remember, stay curious. <laughs>